games. Time now for manager expectations presented by our coach. We're going to welcome in Lou Stagner of our coach. Lou, now listen, I've been looking forward to this week's episode because you know, you know, we're going to discuss my data. I'm a little nervous, as you know. I started using Arcos about a month ago, twisted the sensors into my clubs, used my phone to track my shots. I love the range finder, the yardages in real time for slope and wind and temperature. But let's start with my driver game. I play a lot of Aspetuck Valley Country Club, as you know. How am I driving so far, Lou? Yeah, uh, so I've been looking forward to this one as well, Damon, and I promise to be gentle as we go through this. So... Distance is a real strength for you off Thank the you. tee. You hit the ball a long way uh, for a 16 handicap. You hit the ball a long way for any handicap, so really solid off the tee. An opportunity for you is accuracy. You are definitely missing a lot of shots right, way too many shots right, and the best drivers typically miss – about 50% left and 50% right. I think you're 42% on the right side that you're missing. So I would either <coughs> tell you to maybe shift your target a little bit left, unless, this is a question for you, unless you're guarding against a left miss, which sometimes you see this when you see someone shifted so far over. I am. I, I hate the hook. I'm trying to eliminate yeah. one side <clears throat> of the golf course. as the best players in the world do as well. Do you think I should hit more three woods or a five wood perhaps? You know, it depends on the golf course. If you're playing tight courses, you have a pretty wide dispersion. And if there's a lot of trouble out there, out of bounds, hazards, you should think <laughs> about dropping down. You probably need about, for your driver, about 85 yards-ish of room. If you have less than that, where less than that means you're going to get yourself into penalty stroke situations, I would think about dropping back. Your three-wood is typically not going to be that much more accurate for you. So when you find yourself on really tight holes or tight courses, I would even suggest going one lower than your three would. Make sure we're keeping that ball in play. I can see a lot of penalty strokes on tighter holes or courses for you. Yeah, it's the bane of the big hitter, myself, Tiger, Rory, yeah. you know, John Daly. We go through these kinds of things. How about my approach numbers, Lou? How are they looking so far? You know, they're really, they're solid. They're really solid. And, and it looks like you've been playing a little bit better recently than, than your 16 handicap. Uh, the one area in your approach game that needs some work is that 50 to 100 yard space, which is common for a lot of players. And when I, when I dove into it, it looks like it's a distance control thing. Missing a, a lot short there, some long. Uh, so dial in those partial wedges. And I think that's going to help out quite a bit with your approach game. And then overall, you're leaving a, a lot of approach shots short of the green. 26% overall of your approach shots are coming up short of the, uh, short of the green and less than 4% are going long. So you may want to mm. think about adjusting, maybe taking an extra club in certain situations. And I think you're going to hit more greens if you do that. It's a pride thing. You know, no one wants to take extra clubs. want to <laughs> muscle up. How about my putting numbers? I'm getting closer to the green. I'm getting nervous because my short game is very, very finicky. What can you tell me about my putting numbers? Well, welcome to the club there. I think we all feel the same way there sometimes. So lag putting Really solid, Thank really you. good yeah. uh, lag putting, uh, probably really good speed control from what I can see. Uh, lots of opportunity inside 10 feet, uh, which is, again, really common. That is a, such an important distance for every skill level, uh, pros all the way to 20 handicaps and everybody in between. So lots of work inside of 10 feet, uh, maybe, uh, maybe a, a lesson, uh, a, a putting specific lesson to see what might be going on there. Is it read or is it, is it a start line for you? That's one area I would dive in if I read. Yeah. You know, Bermuda grass versus Poe. <laughs> I got to get yeah. dialed in a little more on the greens. How about my club distances? Uh, am I kind of locked in pretty well with my distances? You know, it's not too bad. Um, you know, you only have a few rounds in there. We're going to definitely want to get some more rounds from you on this. From what I can see, your gapping is okay. Uh, you have a couple of areas of the bag where some of the clubs are, are pretty close to one another in distance. And so I would pay attention to this as more data starts to come in, as you start to get more rounds. It may be worth a visit to your club pro to get lost and lies checked. Uh, those things, as you hit golf balls, especially if you're hitting you know, any number of shots off of a mat, those things can get out of whack. 
and get them on a machine, let them check just to make sure that there's no issue there. Uh, other than that, it looks pretty good. And, and I, I just pay attention as more data starts to come in. And that 282 off the tee, baby, that is, that's a sweet, Huge. sweet sound. Yeah, I've been, yeah. been working up and shredding. Listen, I'm loving my Arcos on, on my, my clubs. It's been a lot of fun doing this segment focused on me. People at home know that I got a little bit of game. Lou, looking forward to speaking to you again soon. Thanks so much, buddy. Yeah, thanks, Damon. We'll see you soon. That's right. That's what I'm talking about, baby. All right, coming up on Golf Today on Sunday.